Buenas tardes. Uh, with the presentation that uh, Bert Garcia made about uh, Luis Valdez. Good evening. I see the clock, and we are 12 hours behind our normal printing schedule for El Eccentrico magazine. I usually have two pressmen that operate our 24 hour around the clock schedule. However, both pressmen are unavailable this evening. Okay, one is uh, Mr. Fernandez, uh, Angel Fernandez, a manager at Eric's Printing, and he's obligated with uh, family commitments. The other is Umberto, he's a student at San Jose State, and so he tells me that, well, he's inundated with school work and studies and uh, impossible for him to help us this evening. Okay, I guess. People ask, I'm Umberto, why do you work so hard? Why don't you get sufficient help as necessary? ¿Por qué trabajas tanto? ¿Y por qué no consigues ayuda? Well, there's many factors. Uh, it's always a balancing act between overhead expenses and income revenue. My two primary focuses are first, to provide a living for my family, and secondly is to pursue my creative passion. And of course, to accomplish both of those goals, I must first generate sufficient income. El dinero. Money, money, money. It, you know, el dinero manda. El manda a trabajar. And I veces que manda a hacerlo solito. In April of 1949, I published the first El Excentrico issue. And for the past 15 years, I have pursued my creative passion and opportunity. Look around. You're all here because of an opportunity. And if it wasn't you, then it was perhaps your parents or your parents' parents or your great-great-grandparents. They all came to America for an opportunity, hopefully a better life. Cuando llegó aquí de El Paso, Texas, in the spring of 1946, with my wife, Guadalupe, and her three charming children, Ivan Marie, Cesar Hugo, and Humberto III, we drove into the Valley of Heart's Delight in a very tired Model T Ford. <laughs> As a Beacon graduate of El Paso Technical School, at five years of my own negocio in El, in El Paso, I was hired by Smith Printing Company on North First Street. The valley was bustling con hispanos, and I recognized a public need that was not being fulfilled. I felt I had the, the technical and the language experience that, that I could provide that end. A Spanish-English publication that would reflect our populace, our our social, political, business, community, traditions, a publication for our countrymen, our community, mis paisanos de Mexico. The braceros, those that came to the start of the Second World War via the U.S.-Mexico bracero program, provided a minimum wage of 30 cents an hour. These brazos de Mexico would perform the work that Americans used to do, but were now being sent off to fight the war. That agreement ended this year, and I am very concerned that that, that program will happen as if when um, President Harvard Hoover, 10 years prior to that, signed a deportation act that sent one million Hispanics back to Mexico, and, uh, and then prior to that, in 1954, a, a deportation act by President Dwight Eisenhower issued Operation Wetback that ordered the removal, violently or otherwise, of 1,300,000 workers. That was insane.
wetback. The very word is a degradation. Como me hace sentir esta palabra? They worked the fields, the mines, the, the railroads, supported their families here and in their patria. These, these were our families, our communities, our businesses, our means of a livelihood. Publishing El Eccentrico, these, this for este pueblo, the San Jose de Guadalupe, we have all witnessed many important changes. The Civil Rights Act was signed. A war beginning to rage in Vietnam. Something on the stop, Vietnam. <coughs> a free speech movement at the University of California at Berkeley. And a key in San Jose. There is a leadership taking place. Perhaps you've recognized it. Los del Campo are organizing. And one of those hijos del campo, a young man who is Live the corrida, that's the road traveled by the migrant worker. He's worked tirelessly to earn a scholarship to attend San Jose State, where he's studied English and developed a voice, a perspective, and in my opinion, accurately reflects the frustration, the injustice, the anger, not heard of by a Chicano. Ay, Luis, a machete. Él quiere matar a todos que no están en acuerdo con él. He'll come to anyone that's in disagreement with him. No, no, no se creen, no se creen. Pero qué coraje tiene este muchacho. The courage must be on the, the eloquence that he conveys demands a reader's re attention. The kind of attention that can inflame significant change. El Machete, does he restrain his disenchantment? <laughs> Absolutely not. He cursed. Cabron. <laughs> Immediately the responses were, were intense, like, like this with the following one from Daniel Saldana, his fellow columnist. Dan, <clears throat> Dan Humberto. <clears throat> Cuando, cuando una persona escribe para el público, no puede usar el léxico florio de una taberna. When a, a person writes from, for the public, one cannot use flowery lexicon of a low-life tavern. <laughs> Luis, Luis used the word cabrón only once in that issue. However, it was his very first alexandrico. <laughs> Column. I had considered the ramifications of allowing his article to be published, as Lewis had submitted, and also evaluated the possible negative reaction from the advertising sponsors. And yet I felt his passion, his, his fervor, the intensity he championed for the migrant worker, the campesino, was compelling enough to publish. I chose not to deny his vision. We published his columns in January, and February, and March, April, May, June, and then, and then, ma, he disappears. To Cuba? Aprender que? Ah, Chihuahua. Upon his return from Cuba, he, submit, he submits an article for the October 5th issue where he shares his experiences along with his need for an agrarian reform. A sharing of the land? <laughs> Amachete aligns the Mexican worker in the United States with the revolutionary socialist of Cuba. In review of his columns, at, at first I thought, I, Luis, Luis, Luis. You are a college-educated man. You write in two languages. You communicate with vibrancy. Please do not waste your time or our readers' time with this playing this victim card. One column, one column that he dwelled into, the world of his grandfather, an abuelo, who just happened to be a veteran soldier that proudly fought with Pancho Villa. But since he could no longer survive the 
post-revolutionary Mexico, he was forced to move to the United States. I could not help but to make a compare connection, a deeply personal connection. I've rarely shared this story with anyone, and, but perhaps it's necessary now. My father, Humberto Garcia, was a military officer in this damn war, the Mexican Revolution. His rank, a lieutenant colonel. His fate, killed in battle at the age of 26. By who? Los Viistas, Las Fuerzas Armadas de Pancho Villa. February the 20th, 1918. I was six months, seven days young. I never knew him. My mother, Rosaria de la Rosa, was ravaged with tuberculosis, and she died before my eighth birthday. At her deathbed, she whispered, Hijo, vida tu vida, con pasión, vida tu vida, con fuerza. My son, live your life in passion, live your life. And that's how I've chosen to live my life. That's what I have done. I've written a series entitled, A Yet Oi E Manana. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, I expressed, all we have, all yesterdays are gone. All yesterdays are Dead. Living in the future is impossible and emotionally futile. All we have is today. We are only given now, this very moment. Nothing else is promised. Alexandrigo is my vision. A vibrant communication vehicle for the Hispanic Americans that celebrates our traditions, our politics, businesses, our social events, the beauty of the family, as well as the reality, as well as the tragedy. El Machete writes, that part of la raza that came to the United States just as Mexico was claimed by its real inhabitants, missed out on one of the first rewards of the revolution, self-respect. They crossed the border and their remembrance of the patria was forever stained by memories of festering poverty and hopeless misery. For all their hopes of material gain, their immigration meant a spiritual regression for them and for their sons. A legacy of shame for being of Mexican descent in the land of the gringo. I'm Berto Garcia believes man's priority should first be his family, thereafter in service to his community, his pueblo. Alexandrico serves not only as a tool for recording of our contributions, but for something even greater, a change. A ver qué. 